So I wanted to take a break from showing you guys all the kind of the cards that I collected over the past few years to show you another painting. But this one I wanted to make into more of a tutorial like I did with the NST one that I did quite a while ago now. So I wanted to kind of level it up a little and I wanted to do something a little more, you know, with a few more techniques and things like that. So I'd love to show you guys kind of how to paint Call of the Haunted and how to make it kind of a full art thing and, you know, the techniques and the materials that you'll need to use it. So let's go and have a look at how the card is painted and then we'll get straight into it. So first things first, the materials that I've been using are primarily gold and acrylic paints. And I'll, use, I'll tell you exactly the colours that I've used here. Now you have your, obviously, you have your white and your black. So carbon black and titanium white. Then we have just primary cyan and primary magenta. See, a lot of the colours that I use are very much primary colours because they can mix into anything. I do own a few more than that, but generally speaking, as long as you've got the primary and secondary colours as your you know, base, you can kind of make most things. Uh, although I did do a cheeky and use Kinastodrome Violet, which is more of like a pinkish purple, for the smoke of the Call of the Haunted. And to top it all off for the kind of the ground layering, I also used uh, Celestial Grey Citadel paint. This is Celestial, no, Celestra Grey, sorry. Uh, Citadel paint because it kind of it's still kind of thin enough that you can use that so I would go with Citadel paints if you don't want to necessarily go out and get golden acrylics But you know couple of do's and don'ts don't use sharpies, please the love of God never ever use a sharpie They're, th they're too thick they they mark the card to a point where it just looks ugly And you, they don't mark it well enough that you can just not street see straight through it unless it's jet black which you can use a jet black sharpie for certain details, but I'll come to that in a second because uh, I use something slightly different. Um, don't use normal acrylic paints, they're too thick and you'll end up with a card that thick. Uh, water down your layers, make sure that you layer your colours first because if you do everything kind of just thin layer, thin layer, thin layer, thin layer, it will build up evenly and it will just look that much more polished at the end. Do be sure to use more than one size of brush. I use two different ones, but these are both for Warhammers, but you can get kind of any kind of brushes realistically, as long as they're of decent quality and they're small, that's what matters. I use a zero uh, for the larger portions, like the base coat and things like that, and a double zero for the finer points. So you can identify them in the Warhammer stores by the color of the ends, or just look at the number. Also, you might want to get a toothpick, simple little thing for Getting rid of like the nasty edges. I mean, I you actually see me use one of these during this video, where you know I can kind of go into where the continuous trap part of the card is, and just kind of just get rid of the little edges that I've painted over too heavily. The first thing that you really want to do is you want to identify your color scheme. Now, blue is obviously the main focus of this card, blue and purple. So blue is obviously the background, and you kind of want to lighten it with. You need to kind of uh, synergize the different colors that are within the card. For example, the the bottom of the card is grey. It uses the celestial grey that I talked about earlier, and in order to lighten the blue that I've used for the background, I used that grey rather than a white or anything like that, so it stays uniform within the card. And even with the purple of the smoke, I also use the same blues and the same greys to kind of just keep you know, synergy within it. I only use the slightest amount of white, in fact, in fact, barely at all, because there's just not white in the card. It's very, very, you know, grey, purple, blue. Those are the three colours you want to identify, so if you can get past that, you're on a winning streak. In terms of actually applying the paint, it depends on what you're doing. For the blues and the greys on the bottom of the card, all I do is I put a base coat of the grey on, and while the paint is still wet, I would get either the black and white to kind of just adjust the brightness of the tone just ever so slightly as you're going through it. For the smoke, what I did is I took the brush and I literally would just stipple the, the paint onto the card and, you know, again, take the neat colour from what you need, whether it be the purple, the red, the grey, anything like that, or the blue, just to just accentuate the tones ever so slightly and go from there. And you just literally just kind of dot it on and you can kind of blend it out from there. The last thing I use in terms of materials is actually one of these. Now I said not to use Sharpies for a reason. These are brush tipped felt pens and they're really really good for getting really fine lines. And you still don't want to use too much of this because all you're using it for is to accentuate the blacks and make the lines more sort of defined than colouring in with a Sharpie. I tried it once, it just looks terrible. It looks glossy and that's not what you want. So I would just suggest using one of these just to kindly sort of even out those lines and then go from there. And that's pretty much it. I hope that everything I've either shown you or said here it will help you make cards of your own. If you do make any, then it'd be really cool to hear from you guys and you send me pictures of what you've done. And then we can kind of go on a one-to-one -one basis and I can tell you what you've done right and what, what may improve in the future. 
Leave a like on the video if you like what you've seen, and there's plenty of other paintings on here on my channel, so if you want to see more of them, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. You know, it's always good to network and everything, so share it out too. And hopefully next week I'll be back on track, and then I'll be posting up more videos on my Yu-Gi-Oh collection and my Magic collection when that's finished up, because I wanted to show people why I kind of kept these things hidden for so long. And hopefully I'll hear from you guys soon. So it was really nice talking to you guys. See you later.